Welcome to Resilient Minds 365, where we discuss the resilient stories of entrepreneurs, professionals, and students with mental illnesses to encourage you to strive, thrive, and live in abundance. I'm your host, Cleone Crawford. Welcome back to another episode of Resilient Minds 365, where we discuss the resilient stories of entrepreneurs, professionals, and students with mental illnesses to encourage you to strive, thrive, and live in abundance. I'm your host, Cleone Crawford. Well, guys, we have an amazing guest with us today. Today, we have Tracy Owens with us. Who is Tracy Owens? Well, Tracy is a graduate of the SUNY Onienta, and and she's also a mindfulness coach. coach. She is an uplifting person who has overcome many challenges in her life, including bipolar disorder. This has inspired her to become an advocate for mental wellness, helping many women one-on-one and runs a daily morning routine for all. She is also a devoted mother, who is raising her daughter to be strong physically, mentally, and spiritually. So with that said, I now present to you Tracy Owens. So Tracy, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Today's been a good day so far. How about you? I'm doing really good today. It's a beautiful day. You know, can't complain. Can't complain at all. So tell us some more about your profession, what you do as a mindfulness coach, how you got started and so forth. Well, I I was struggling really bad with bipolar, as you already mentioned, and <clears throat> I discovered mindfulness for myself through a free morning routine that a friend, she became a friend, and it helped me so much that I decided that I should continue teaching it myself. When she ended her morning routine, I started teaching mindfulness and meditation and creative visualization. And when I did it for other people, it held me accountable. And I've been two years free of anxiety and depression now. So that's how I got into it. I just know it worked for me. And so now I'm teaching it. I am so dedicated and I I am passionate about teaching this stuff. That's amazing. That's amazing. So you also mentioned that you are a mother to uh, a daughter. How old is she? My daughter is 10 years old and she is homeschooling and she's right upstairs right now. So hopefully she's with her father and (laughs) doesn't interrupt, but she's really, (laughs) she's a, she's a really good girl. Yeah. That's good. That's good. 10 years old. That's wow. I have a son as well. My son is six years old. Um, he's autistic, but um, very bright, very mm. bright. Does um, multiplications and it's just crazy how the way his mind thinks. Right. Um, yeah. Very bright, very bright child. All right. So Let's move into, with this said, we're going to move into the mental health piece of the interview. So um, we know that you were diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Is there any other diagnoses that you have? No, it's bipolar one. So that's the more severe, um, severe highs and lows of the bipolar um, spectrum. Um, You have mania or depression for a few weeks on end my mania actually lasted a few months and depression even longer than that so and so with that i experience um depression anxiety as well so but it's all encompassed by the bipolar one that's my main diagnosis yes okay perfect and when were you diagnosed that was in 2011 uh i had two prior um depressions with it was severe psychosis there was one junior year of high school and one junior year of college but we couldn't diagnose nobody could diagnose me with de- uh, bipolar until there was a mania so that my first manic attack was in 2011 okay i see i see mm-hmm. 
All right. So tell us more about your mental health story of resilience. What did you have to go through? How did it, how did you first discover that you were, um, that you had bipolar? Walk us through it, the chronological process of everything that happened to you. Well, so in junior of high school, I had, I was very, uh, as a child, secure. I had a really easy childhood, um, not a lot of stress. And then in high school, I took on a lot of responsibility. I was very, very involved in school and I won um, a few different summer programs. And so I took on a lot of responsibility as a young person. And that summer, I was booed off a stage. Mm -hmm. I got in front of a stage with um, a bunch of teenage girls. To, went to, uh, I went to speak, do a speech, and I wasn't prepared enough, and they booed me. And it was so, it hurt me so much that um, it triggered something into me. Mm -hmm. And that trigger, I realized that life's not always easy, that there's that there's not nice people in the world too, and that sometimes government is corrupt and don't have people's best interests in mind. And it was all these crazy epiphanies that it it really shocked me. And I had my first mental breakdown in high school. So they just thought that I had one sort of one episode, you know, that it might never happen again. Um, but my mother was very concerned that uh, it was so bad that she was concerned that I might never be the same. Actually, it was that severe. Mm -hmm. But I came out of it. I ended up going to college. I, you know, I took psychology for <laughs> um, and then the same thing happened junior year of college. I had another mental breakdown with these different epiphanies and these stresses. I couldn't go abroad. And so those were the two um, unbeknownst to me. It was the beginning of bipolar disorder. So I was on medication for uh, depression for a few years and I didn't want to take it forever. So I went off of it. And then lo and behold, when I was working in Virginia, I had this spiritual experience and it was very enlightening. Again, a lot more epiphanies about God and about spirituality. And it was very exciting for me. And that triggered a manic episode. Yes. So, yes. And this manic episode, I... I don't know if you want to know some things that I did, but I thought that I should be barefoot and walk in the median of a highway and hitchhike. And I got picked up by the police and pretended I was, I, I pretended that I was blind and paralyzed. Hmm. And I ended up in the hospital for mania. And that's where I stood on a psych ward table and I was singing gospel music to all the inpatients. Mm -hmm. And I just thought the angels were with me and God was with me. And I'm sure they were there to protect me and everything. But I was just, I just kept going up and up and up and up to where I was not no longer um, in reality. You know, I, there was no balance at all. And that's when I was diagnosed actually with bipolar one okay. and because I had those two prior psychosis and depressions and now this really crazy manic episode. Mm -hmm. So um, I didn't want to admit it at first, you know, I just thought I had a few different spiritual awakenings and that I really didn't have a problem. Mm -hmm. um, but when I really fully accepted my diagnosis was a few years after that, I had two more hospitalizations. I tried to go back to work and it was impossible for me. The stress was too much. My anxiety was too high. 
And that's when I really started taking my recovery seriously. Um, the fact that I couldn't go to work, I wasn't able to raise my daughter the way I wanted to. So I really started to settle down and take my recovery serious. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Wow. That was a very uh, roller coaster. Let's just call that a roller coaster. Definitely. It's definitely a roller coaster. That's bipolar for you. You're woo, yeah. up and down, especially the bipolar one. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I understand because I too have bipolar one. So okay, and I've gone through the the roller coaster of getting these epiphanies and going through the mania attacks and and then and actually thinking that I have this higher purpose and I'm getting messages and do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So I yeah, I totally, sure. understand. I totally understand what you're talking about. So, yeah. What did you have to do to overcome or bounce back from your low points? List all the resources that were applicable. Okay, well, my the first time, um, I really just took it very easy as if I had a a cold or some or I broke a leg, you know. It's like your mind is broken and it needs to heal. And yeah. but that was the first time I didn't we didn't know how I even if I would overcome this and but it healed. And like I said, um, I ended up going to college, did well. And then the next time when it happened again, they wanted to prevent it. So I tried depression medications. Uh, I believe it was Lexapro at that time. Mm -hmm. And once I started feeling better, I thought I, I don't need it anymore. So I stopped taking the Lexapro. And then lo and behold, uh, two years after that was the manic. And I promised my mother that I would stay on the medications this time. And so I started taking the medications. Now, th a lot of times, unfortunately, when you are going through a crisis, they give you quite a bit of medication. Yes. And uh, you might have, re you might relate to this where it's almost like too much. Yeah. So Luckily, my mother was a really good advocate for me. So she knows what my personality is. I'm a quirky, fun, loving person. I'm creative. And when um, I was on too much medication, I got really dulled down. I wasn't the same person. And she was able to go to the doctors and say, this isn't my child. And right. we need to adjust something. Because I wasn't, at that point, I wasn't even able to, uh, when you're in that mindset, you just think that's who you are. You know, you kind of forget who you are. Mm -hmm. And so it's really good to have friends and family and people that can speak for you um, when it's that severe anyway. And so we adjusted my medications. In fact, we've adjusted my medications multiple times. and. I, I got to the point where I was stable and I was feeling somewhat like myself. I wasn't in the hospital anymore. I was able to raise my daughter and um, do pretty well. However, I wasn't a hundred percent. And so I would wake up with anxiety every morning and depressive thoughts. And even though I was out of the hospital and I was doing everything the doctors were asking me to do, I was doing my therapy, um, both psychologist and a social worker, very important. They're two different things and they're very important. And I was doing my medication therapy. I was staying very consistent on that. I can't emphasize enough. You need to stay consistent on your medication. If you take it one day and not the other, <laughs> how are they ever going to adjust your medications and make them right for you. So stay consistent on your medications. Right. And so even though I was out of the hospital, I wasn't feeling a hundred percent myself. And one day I just, I had this thought, I just asked myself, can I feel better? Like, is it, is it possible to, for me to feel better with an affective disorder? And mm -hmm. just that thought um, made me go on a little journey of trying to find myself again and that thought of kind of, it was it was recreating myself 
essentially and making a new story for myself like maybe i can maybe i can do better than this right. instead of just settling for having chronic depression and anxiety you know so i was functioning but i wasn't thriving and that's when i discovered mindfulness and and the self-help community actually i never knew anything about tony robbins i didn't know i didn't know those self-help people <laughs> mm -hmm. i'm sure you know like a whole bunch of them you know um and so i i was like wow there's a self-help community there's people trying to improve themselves every day and so why can't i you know i have this disorder but why can't i and so i started meditating daily doing gratitude list and gratitude list setting small goals and i mean these were tiny goals like i'm going to get out of bed at 9 a.m like i'm not gonna oversleep today that was that was my goal or staying a little more hydrated and slowly but surely it was actually two weeks after doing this daily consistent mindfulness my anxiety went away Wow. And so I thought, yeah, there's got to be, there's got to be something to this mindfulness stuff and recreating yourself and daily meditation. And these were, it was, uh, the first meditation I did was actually Tony Robbins priming. Um, but any meditation I, is beneficial. So, and so I thought, well, there's something to this. And then I wasn't totally consistent and I would notice the days that I didn't do my meditation and gratitude list, my anxiety would co come back. Mm -hmm. And this anxiety was almost like a voice. I, I didn't hear auditory voices, but it would tell me like, I'm a loser that I, you know, kind of like uh suicidal ideation, like mm -hmm. you should have died in your sleep, things like that. Just coming into your head and it's like why why are these why am I having these thoughts but once I became totally consistent with therapy with psychologist social worker medication and then mindfulness mm -hmm. I have been um I have been anxiety depression free for two years now and Yay. <laughs> uh, I've been feeling like myself again. This is me, <laughs> Tracy Owens, in silly, goofy, fun loving, and uh, uplifting. And I'm just so, I'm so passionate to elevate people's moods now. You know, it is not fun to be chronic, chronically depressed and anxious. And this stuff has been, this stuff helped me. And now I've been teaching it for over a year and it's helping others so that <laughs> did that answer that question oh you did yeah because you had four, four basically there were four things that helped you to get from your low points which was um the uh the medication the therapy um i forgot the other two um therapy or, with psychologists and a social yeah, worker so, social worker and the like psychologist yes yep medication and mindfulness and mindfulness yeah so yeah basically you answered the question so the next question i have for you is what are three things you wish you had available when you were at your lowest point oh what did i say in my preview um what i wished i wish i had known about mindfulness yeah i wish i wish i went to the psych ward and they taught me how to pray and meditate. Uh, I wish they taught me about gratitude list and journaling. Um, it was like so quick to just put me on medication and, yes. and a lot of it. And by the way, I want to say that now that I've been doing all this, I have reduced my medication significantly. And yes. I'm with the help of my, my psychologist, praise God. And um, I wish, I really wish that they would have talked to be a, me more about these spiritual experiences that I had related to me, made me feel more human, 
-hmm. because there's so many people that go through these experiences yes. and I think they're downgraded. You know, they're these, you have these experiences in life and when people just call you crazy and make you feel like poo poo, <laughs> um, it, it makes you, it brings you down faster, I think, or, or you retaliate and you go higher. You know, so if people taught me mindfulness and related to me um, more personally in the psych ward and in therapy right from the get go, I think I would have, I know I would have recovered faster. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. And what words of hope can you give to our listeners? What would you tell someone who's been in your shoes? Yeah. Uh, if you're not feeling like yourself, do not give up. Do not give up and reimagine yourself. Like just have that mustard seed of hope, right? That you can feel like yourself again. Just have the, just a little bit of hope that you can feel better. And once you see, once you have that little bit of, hmm, maybe, maybe I can feel a little better. You, it will send you on a tra trajectory. It will start snowballing and you will start feeling better. You And you start putting in the work. You start acting on those things. So don't settle for less than thriving. You can feel like yourself again with, with bipolar one, with depression and anxiety. Don't give up. Work with your doctors. If I can do it, you can too. Love it. Love it. So... Now, we are going to do a little switch in the interview. As you can see, there are some books behind me that say The Music of My Life. Um, that book is a book that I wrote about my journey with um, music therapy and bipolar disorder. So with that said, I'd like to know what type of music do you like? I like anything that is appropriate for a 10-year-old. If my daughter can't listen to it or I don't think it's appropriate for her, I won't listen to it because spiritually I want to be fulfilled and uplifted. And so I have a, a whole range of music that I like, but I say I mostly listen to pop and now um, Christian uh, rock and roll and Christian pop, you know, modern Christian music. And um but I mean, I'll listen to some oldies, old rock and roll. <laughs> I even I even put on NPR and have the classical play in sometimes. It depends on my mood. Cool, cool. Okay. Yeah. So if you were to think of a song that best describes your journey, what would it be and why? Mm. I Am Woman by Emmy Millie. It's just... She just tells, you know, there's so much to a person and I am woman, just, just listen to the lyrics. I just, it's uplifting and makes you realize who you are mm -hmm. and you are a person, you are special, you have, you have power, you know? And then I also really like Vacation by Dirty Heads. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just... When I play that music, I'm like, yes, this is what I want. I want my life to feel like vacation every day. I want to enjoy my life. Life is way too short. I spent way too much time depressed um, yeah. for eight years. So this is how I want to live. And that that song just always pumps me up and reminds me to live life to the fullest. Amazing. Love it. Love it. So how can we stay in touch with you? What are your social media handles? Well, if you hashtag uplift with Tracy, you will find me on Facebook. You will find me on TikTok, Instagram. Um, I have a LinkedIn and I have a website, upliftwithtracy.com. If you want to know more about me, my bio and my morning routine that I teach now, go ahead and look me up. So hashtag uplift with Tracy, you'll find me. Perfect, perfect. Well, Tracy, it's been a pleasure having you on our show and for you to share your journey with us. It's definitely been a really cool journey and it's cool that we have, we're kindred souls that we share the same type of 
experiences, yeah. which is kind of yeah. cool. So, I would love to stay in touch and even know more about you. That would be amazing. Yeah, no problem. Well, I got my book, so you can always read on if you want to get my book. It's uh, it's on Amazon, um, The okay. Music of My Life. Um, I basically share, in a, in a nutshell, I've been hospitalized 30 times. I've been to prison twice, um, suicidal, homeless, and uh, and now I'm a, a mother, and I've written three books. So and I have wow. so so I've turned my life around from that really dark place to a much more uplifting place. So I'm really happy. With Look at you. You have a resilient mind. Yes. I have a resilient mind. You yes. did it. See? it. We both did it. You you anybody did watching it. can do it too. <laughs> exactly. I love it. And I'm also a Christian. So that's a very, very, a very big part of my, my journey is my Christian faith. It helped me to get to where I am and to, keep me where I am and understand the spiritual relationship between my mental health mm -hmm. and um, what, how I'm supposed to give back to the community. Yes. So. It gives you a firm foundation mm -hmm. and it gives you hope for the future yeah. and it gives you, um, it gives you values to live by every single day. Yes. Um, it's a beautiful thing. And Jesus is, he's my savior for sure. And, oh, that's so nice that we can share that. By the way, yeah. I am writing a book too. So yeah. Yeah, that, that should be done. Um, not too long from now, the discovery of a bipolar chick. So oh, keep on the lookout for that. Make sure you keep, keep me, let's stay in touch for sure. And when your book comes out, let me know so I can get a copy of it and, and support you. Thank you. I'll look up your book too. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So with that said, and to all you resilient minds out there until next time, please subscribe to us on all our platforms and don't forget to rate the show and leave a review for us on the Apple Podcasts. Also, join the community of resilient minds and sign up for our monthly newsletter at www.onlycleone.com dot com be sure to grab a copy of my book the music of my life on all Mar amazon market eh, marketplaces to get to know me better if you can think of one person that will receive value from today's show or connect with tracy's testimonial please share it with them feel free to take a screenshot of this week's episode of the podcast and tag us on instagram you can tag myself at only cleone or resilient mind 365 and today's guest at Uplift with Tracy. And remember, mental health is not a death sentence. Despite your illness, you can strive, thrive, and live a life of abundance. Until next time, I'm Cleone Crawford, and I'm signing off.